which of the following engineering control systems can be labeled as closed systems? And I know you know, as I said already, what closed systems are, so they protect yourself. It's a barrier, barrier product. Well, five answers again. Biological safety cabinets two, type 2 and 3. I'm not sure if you use a lot of cabinets here in the UK, but uh, probably. Negative pressure isolators. Positive pressure isolators. All of them or none of them. Okay, 68% voted for none of them, and 70 said all of them. Oh, that's a little bit different. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, actually the answer on the question is five. None of them are closed. So I hope that I can <coughs> convince the 17% who said all of them, that it's none of them. Actually, cabinets, as I said before, is, is an open system. An isolator is also an open system. So at the end, you have to open to get the drugs out, and it's the same with a cabinet. So they're not closed. Protection about, uh, against exposure to cytotoxic drugs. Well, there are, in fact, I would say four main things you can do to protect yourself. And it's not only what you do, but it's also what the government, what state, what uh, Europe, uh, Europe is doing. And uh, the first step is, uh, I would say, a lot of paper things, directive guidelines and things like that. So a lot of paper things you have to, can follow to protect yourself against cytotoxic drugs. And uh, we have, of course, legislation here in the UK. You have international guidelines. So there are many, many, many much information you can gather about uh, how to handle in a safe way cytotoxic drugs. The second is uh, administrative controls. And that's, of course, also a little bit of a more or less paperwork. And uh, that's following protocols. You have protocols for preparation, you have protocols for administration, for probably protocols for cleaning and all these things. The third is, then it comes really to practice, is engineering controls. And actually engineering controls makes a barrier between you and the, and the drug. And there we have uh, uh, three general options, I would say. That's clean rooms, working in clean rooms. Uh, using ventilation, as I said already before, and you have the cabinets and the isolators. That is more or less the engineering controls you have. And then in the end, you have your personal protective equipment. So how you, yeah, you put things on your body to protect you to be exposed. Well, the actual situation in the U.S. is a lot of variety among these ways of protection. And there are countries where you have... Uh, probably a cabinet or an isolator, but where the protection of the workers is only gloves or sometimes even no gloves. And uh, I think here in the UK and I think northern, middle and south of Europe, then it looks quite all okay when it comes to personal protective equipment. But when you go to the east of Europe, then you see sometimes situations which would be the 70s and the 80s here. So there is a lot to do there. But uh, so it depends a little bit on, on uh, yeah, the country, the hospital, <coughs> and uh, how uh, people protect themselves to uh, cytotoxic, uh, cytotoxic drugs. 
Personal protective equipment, PPE. Well, there are many things how you can protect yourself. I think most common nowadays are special clothing, gloves, masks, and goggles. I think that's the main thing you see nowadays, hair protection, special shoes. Well, you can do a lot, a lot, a lot. There are many things you can do. But what is relevant, actually, that the PPE is always additional to the previous things like engineering controls, administrative controls. So you have always to do other things first, and in the end, it's the final step that you take PPE. And that's a very standard procedure in occupational hygiene. So when you are dealing with chemicals or with, 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 with dust or whatever, the standard occupational hygiene strategy is that you take always PPE in the end. You have to do a lot before to prevent exposure, and if you expect it or you, you, you think there may be an accident or whatever that can happen. There you have your PPE, uh, PPE for. That's the standard procedure, actually. And nowadays, a lot of people focus very much on PPE. The more PPE you take, they think the more safe you are. But that's probably it is, but it's better to prevent that you get exposed. OK, in the end, when um, we know that people work with these drugs and uh, we know that sometimes uh, we, uh, people smell the drugs. Uh, in the end, you have the opportunity to do monitoring. And monitoring is actually what you can do in two ways. Um, one way is that you check in the environment. So the working environment can be the, the wards, that can be in the pharmacy department, can be in clean rooms, can be everywhere actually. And the other thing is that you look into the worker itself. So you go into the body of the worker and check if the worker is expo exposed or not. When we go to in the environmental monitoring, which <coughs> is indicated in the left, then we check the environment, but we get no information if people are exposed or not. So for instance, if we check contamination on surfaces or wherever, and we find contamination there, there is no indication that that contamination results in exposure because people can be protected well and so on. So it doesn't give that information. And we cannot make a risk assessment. So that's the point, good to know, when you go to environmental testing. But a lot of people say, well, I'm fine with all this environmental testing. I want to, to know if I'm exposed. If I take my PPE and I do things according to guidelines, and I think I'm safe, but I want to know if I'm exposed or not. And then you do biological monitoring. And nowadays, there are tests, urine tests available that you select the urine, collect the urine of the workers and you analyze for the drugs, if you can detect the drugs in the urine. And it's actually the same way as it is done in the sports events, like uh, if you have cycling or sports, that you check uh, sports on drugs and things like that, if they are exposed or not. So this is actually the same way you can do it. So it's a little bit of difference between environmental testing or biological testing. This is what we do as a company. It's just for your information. We have two types of testing available on the market. Monitoring surface contamination by wipe sampling. I will show that later on. Uh, and monitoring exposure of workers by urine analysis. So actually we can analyze urine of workers on three drugs, <coughs> cyclophosphamide, iphosphamide, and the 5F metabolite, and by workers, which we do for, for some hospitals, and we also do for pharmaceutical industry. And then if you find positive urine samples, then you know that people are exposed or not. Uh, sorry, then you know that people are exposed. The wipe testing, wipe sampling, is we can do it on many drugs nowadays, but just, just for your information, uh, that it's possible to do. How is uh, monitoring with wipe sampling done? Well, here you see an example. It's uh, on the left, on the top, you see a table where uh, a preparation is done for cytodrugs. And... Uh, what we, uh, what we did there, we took a, we took a wipe sample from, uh, from this surface. I will show you here. This is the surface here. So they take it there. And then uh, you see that it's transported uh, the, by boxes. You have here a box where uh, prepared bags are put in, which are sent to the wards. 
And then here on the left, you see here where we dripped the liquids on the surface. And here we did the wipe testing. I can show you later on how it's exactly working. So actually what you do, you define surfaces where you think they are contaminated. Then you drip the liquid on it. You take a tissue, you wipe it, you clean it actually, and then you collect it in a bottle. And then finally, with all the information, it's sent to the lab, and you do the analysis. And then people get a report back. So it's very simple, straightforward. It's actually a way of cleaning, cleaning how you do wipe tests. This is uh, options for wipe sampling in the preparation area. So when you think about the pharmacy, then you have here, of course, the packaging. You have the vials here. You have the area where the pharmacist is sitting and doing some writing things, a desk. Here you have the, the cabinets where they do the preparation. And here you see also a little bit of these waste bins with the flip, so that worked that way. But here you have another one which is a closed one. This is much better. And here is more or less a dirty area where a lot of uh, drugs uh, end up uh, in, the waste, uh, in the waste bin, the waste area. And here is a transport uh, system is shipped, is transport by, uh, how do you call it, an, a system from the pharmacy. It's in the air, whatever, and it's coming up to the, to the wards. And this packaging can be also contaminated inside. There's just an option about potential wipe surfing surfaces. When it comes to administration, then you have a little bit other options. This is, for instance, a table near a bed of a patient where they get their, uh, their food, their, their, their dining things. Here you have some remote controls, which is the patient using. And when the patient is sweating, then of course he has sweat on his hands with the drugs and it will be on the remote controls. Here the pumps. The pumps are really one of the pieces which are really, most of the cases, contaminated. You will find always con contamination on the displays here and the, the touching parts of the pumps. Here you have a pole with the floor where you have the infusion. Often here is contamination, but even on the pole. So if you take a pole, have gloves on. The toilet, the most interesting place. <laughs> I'll come later on it, but I can tell you already, never go to a patient toilet. <laughs> Here we have some uh, safety precautions, closed handling for waste. Here, another one too. So it's a sealing system that you put your waste in, and then it's sealed, so you don't be afraid to be exposed by inhalation of papers, whatever. And here we have the laundry, the laundry area where all the clothing is going, and the lining of the beds and things like that. So just a few options where and around you can take some of the, of the wipe, uh, wipe testing. But there are many, many more options. As I said before, files, files are really risky if they are contaminated. And of course you don't know it and you don't see it. But in general, files can be contaminated, so be aware of it. And this is something that happened a few years ago that they discovered <laughs> that you can sleeve files with a plastic film, which is seen here. And you see here the bottom of two ones. This one is not sleeved, but this one is sleeved. So actually there is a plastic film around the vial. And this is very nice because it gives a very good protection. So if the vial is contaminated in the production, and finally in the production they clean it, they, 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 they wash it, but then you get the final step that uh, in the end all the drips come on the bottom side because it's, it's, it's sprayed from the top and then the water and the dilutant is going down, but it ends on the, the bottom and then it's a, yeah, it's a rowing system. So it can probably stay there on this, this side. But then when you take a film in the end, you, you cover the potential contamination on that file, which gives, can give up to 90, 95% reduction in contamination. So if you can have these sleeved files, and you can buy it for your drugs, it can give a good improvement on safety. Here are two other examples. Oh, this is a study, sorry, we did on these files. It's already a long time ago, 2005. But anyhow, it showed that when you have a standard decontamination of 72 files, you find this contamination. And forget nanograms or whatever, just showing that there is contamination on these files, and it wasn't, uh, we checked for platins, or the carboplatin files, 
And then we did an improved cleaning on these files, 75 files, and you see it's already going down. So contamination of the files went down after an improved cleaning. And then finally, when you put the sleeves on and we checked 75 files again, then you can see it's even going down more. So if you have vials with a sleeve protection, then you get a really good reduction of contamination. Here are two other options, or three actually. These are home files with carboplatin, cisplatin, methotrexate. They are covered with the film, you can see here. And these have an extra protection, so if they are falling on the floor, whatever, you don't need to be afraid that they will break. It's an extra protection. But this extra sleeve protection is very good for uh, yeah, reducing contamination. But anyhow, even these files, touch it with your hands, not with your hands, but with gloves. <laughs>